Live from the Business Radio X studio in Atlanta, it's time for Organization Conversation. Brought to you by Wall Control Storage Systems. Wall Control gives you the storage and organization you crave. Now, here's your host, Richard Grove. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show, um, Organization Conversation. This is our second real episode, I believe. Um, so yeah, excited to be here. We have two really exciting guests, both great friends of wall control. And personally, um, just it's been fun working with both of these folks. So without further ado, um, we have Adam with lazy guy DIY and Stephanie with uncommon outpost. Um, both makers in the community We're here ahead of workbench con. So just wanted to get together and talk a little bit about what they have going on. That's exciting. Um, the interaction with wall control that we all have together and, uh, yeah, just kind of see where it goes. So, um, I guess we'll start with you, Adam, tell us a little bit about lazy guy DIY and, uh, what you got going on. Well, there is a lot going on. So, uh, Adam lazy guy DIY, I started this, uh, this little channel six years ago. Um, and I think only a few months after that, uh, I came to Haven and then, uh, left there saying, Hey, I need to reach out to a company and uh, get something to store all these tools I'm getting from uh, this conference. And uh, I think I reached out to you. I thought you were an old man yeah. <laughs> working in the back of a shop. It was like Al, uh, Al Borland. Uh, that's exactly what, you had what I had pictured. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you told me you didn't want to work with me. And then uh, Adam, this is yeah. Well, it's funny that you like bring that up because it, it also speaks to like the the whole premise of WorkbenchCon and like what the you know, quote, influencer crowd is doing is trying to, you know, work with brands. And when we first started, I had no idea the impact it could have and like the benefits that could come from that. And so, yeah, we, we can get into it more, but I mean, just, I'm glad we finally got something worked out because it's, you, you've been a huge asset to wall control over the years um, and continue to uh, do so. And we've had some really creative uh, partnerships that I think have benefited both of us. So anyways, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad I said yes. I'm so. glad you said yes to uh-huh. after you said no. So no means yes uh-huh. after uh, after I badgered you a couple of times. Uh-huh. But yeah, I'm I'm happy to be part of the family for sure. Yes, absolutely. And you certainly are. So yeah. And along those same lines, also part of the family is Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie, tell everybody a little bit about Uncommon Outpost and, um, you know, you could a little bit about how you came to uh, connect with wall control. Well, um, I have been a lifelong learner and collector of hobbies and skills and all of the tools and things that go with them. So I'm, I'm an organized hoarder in my personal life. And, um, I actually moved to the Atlanta area for my significant other's job right before, uh, COVID happened. And I was at workbench con talking to wall control and I was like, yeah, once we get settled in, I'd love to come and come check them out. And then you know, um, I quit my job in North Carolina to be here. So COVID happened and everything I had lined up fell apart. And I was on another podcast with, um, two brand ambassadors from wall control. And they're like, so what are you doing these days? I said, nothing. I'm looking for a job. I'm, I am unemployed and voluntarily in the eyes of the law. So, (laughs) um, so like, Oh, well, you're in Atlanta. You should work for wall control. I'm like, yeah, it's just not that easy. You can't just go in. Obviously they told Adam, no, you know? (laughs) And so, um, they called Richard and turns out while everyone else was at home, not doing anything, they were organizing their house. So wall control needed an extra set of hands. And I was the only one in the greater Metro Atlanta area, not getting unemployment. So they had to hire me. There wasn't anyone else. It worked out great because Stephanie isn't an extra set of hands. She's like three extra sets of hands. So she, I mean, she, she does a lot. I don't know how we've gotten along without her before you came here. So oh, thanks. It's funny. Cause you can actually hear on the podcast that she was on that they stopped tape at one point. And I think they have the whole conversation. I think they reached out to you and then they pick it back up again afterwards. And they're like, yeah, really? We, yeah. We got stuff in the job. So. <laughs> was that with, was that Craig? Was he on that? Was that one of yeah, his? With, uh, with, uh, barefoot forge and yeah. wood brain. Yeah. So and- barefoot forge, uh, he'll probably be on a episode soon to follow this from workbench con. And he's, everybody should listen to that one. Cause he, he's definitely going to be interesting. Just, I, we were talking before we came on and he texted, they just got in Atlanta and apparently he's sending a 500 pound anvil to our, uh, to wall control to be shipped out to Pennsylvania. So well, that's like a third of 
the weight of what Adam sent to wall control. For That's true. Right. <laughs> yes. Sorry. We have pallets of things. It's fun. Uh, we, we actually could hold everybody hostage, so yeah. we should probably do that. That's <laughs> something to consider. So cool. Well, yeah. So, um, so either one of you, what, I guess from the maker slash influencer slash brand ambassador perspective, what, what, um, do you guys look forward to get out of a brand? Um, and kind of what do you expect in return? Not, I mean, that's a really broad question, but to kind of help people who might be listening as to, you know, how they would get started if they're on that side of the fence. And, you know, we can speak to the brands as well, um, from my perspective and folks that you guys have worked with. I've actually taught a class on this at WorkbenchCon mm-hmm. of how to work with brands, and it doesn't matter. Is that one that I was on the panel? With? Yeah, okay, you were, that's actually. what I was. All right, yeah, yep. I couldn't. Rem- yeah, Did you forget already? I know. Uh, I, it's, it's so long. They ago. all run together now, so it's been it's been just great fun over the years. So one of my uh, one of my other businesses is a consulting group where I consult with influencers and a lot a lot of times uh, micro influencers and try to help them figure out what to do with uh, a brand and how to partner with them. And one of the big things that everybody goes with first is they don't have an established following. They don't have, they're, they're not demonstrating what they're bringing to the brand. They just, maybe they, maybe they're a maker and they just make signs and all they show is signs out there. And I know with you and I, when we, when we look at potential partners, we want to see where our product with wall control product will actually be in their shop, in their space, somewhere where it gets high traffic on there. And you get a lot of people that they automatically see other people, um, successful, they get paid big dollars from companies. And that's, there's only a few people that happens with, I think the first thing is you always want to, you approach your brand. You want to look for a partnership where you are going to use the product organically. It's a good fit. And then you kick up on a relationship after that. Um, you and I, obviously we, we kicked off a relationship talking. We started small. I think it was, it was like four panels or something. And now my entire shop is panels. Mm-hmm. And obviously that's a different situation, but I mean, start small, look for a way to work with a brand, especially if it's somebody where you already use the products, you love it. Um, it, it's something that you're passionate about. And then you can talk to the next levels from there. Have, have another project idea after that. I think that's a, a good plan to start with. Yeah. And I think, I mean, kind of piggybacking off of that too, just, just starting, And having no idea where it might go, but looking for creative opportunities to kind of layer on top of that benefits both, you know, both the brand and the individual. So like when we first talked, wall control didn't have an Instagram account Mm -hmm. and we had, you had told me for, it might've been years up to that point, like you really need to do this. And so we were able to put something together to where Adam operated that account um, and still does today, does an amazing job. So like if you DM wall control, it's Adam. And so most of everybody listening probably knows that already, but, um, but yeah, so I think when, from the brand's perspective, when you're, you know, when an influencer or a brand ambassador is reaching out, just look for those creative opportunities. And also one thing that I noticed from the brand side is folks tend to think a brand is a brand is a brand. And th- it, it couldn't be, you know, the, the economies of, or the g- degrees of scale different that, you know, a brand like wall control is versus some billion dollar company um, you know, like the Home Depots and big box stores of the world, they all have different needs, uh, different budgets. And for a smaller company like ours, if you see um, a place where maybe they're not, uh, you know, operating or performing or don't have the presence that you think they could come with, come to them with that. And maybe that could be an opportunity to get things going. So it at least gives them valuable advice. So um, yeah, that would be a little, I guess, brand feedback on my, from my where I sit, I guess. So, well, I mean, a perfect example of that is, I mean, we weren't looking at home gyms or, yeah. or photographers as, as a ambassador group for that. And a home gym is one of our fastest growing segments of ambassadors because everybody's using it. It's, it's clean. You don't have to worry about, it. you can just wipe it all down. It's strong. You can put all this stuff organized there. Cause everybody just throws their gym equipment on the floor. Um, and that's, I mean, if they wouldn't have come to us and said, Hey, I think I've tried it. I like it. We would have probably never thought of that. No, never. I would have, you know, it, when you see it, you're like, Oh, that's a great idea. But even us doing it every day is not something we would have thought to push. So, and we, I mean, I'll go ahead and say, we're going to push it even harder. So we're about to launch a uh, gym pegboard, um, Instagram and brand, uh, kind of a, a separate brand, uh, sister to wall control. And Adam will be heavily involved in that as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, showing showing the brands creative things you can do with it will benefit you and them as well. So, I mean, that's kind of obvious, but anyway. So, Steph, what about you? Any exciting, uncommon outposts things happening 
um, anything you're looking to get out of workbench con or, uh, you know, relationships or brands you're looking to kind of like, have you met all these brands for the first time already? Or is this, um, uh, I've met most of them. And, um, I had one brand reach out to me on Instagram, which is surprising because I'm very small. Um, not, you know, famous like Adam over here. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I like to work with companies that I already use their product, but again, I'm just a little guy. So the only successful like pitches I've ever had started as me asking for advice is I wanted to do something and I wanted to use their product and I didn't know how to do it. And then they ended up, you know, donating product for me to use, but I'm, um, you know, I've had brands use my stuff and not pay me, but, um, but I need to take another one of Adam's classes and figure out how to do that. Better. Adam's good at that. So yeah. And you're, I mean, to the point of you asking for advice, the creative things you get into are amazing. So the thing you were just doing last week with the tablecloth can, that didn't happen and never mind. So <laughs> it's okay. It's, uh, it's, it's still in progress. Okay. What about right. your, uh, like you did the Christmas thing, um, with the, the dress with the cement also. Oh yeah. I, um, I made a dress form out of concrete for my Christmas tree last year. And I entered that in a quick Creek contest, which it got second place. So yeah, I guess technically that's working with a brand, even though yeah. they didn't pick me. For um, sure that is. Up front, yeah. they just did after the fact, though. Yeah. I just, you know, how you can come up with these things, like, blows my mind. I wouldn't think to do that or any of these other projects that you got working, um, you know, but they're awesome. So well, thanks. Yeah. There's a picture of me at work on the Timberland website. Really? <laughs> yeah. So uh, speaking of at work, so Stephanie has come on and has stood up our powder coat line. That was, I guess it's been a year now or just... Yeah, a little over a year. Yeah, so and done a fantastic job there. Um, uh, I guess is there anything at work that you've been able to, you know, take home and use for your own creative, uh, like passions, like any anything, any ideas you've gotten or that you have that you might could leverage the powder coat line or decab tool or anything that we can do to help you kind of ex- extend or pursue your creativity with things. I mean. I have a lot of ideas. I just need to make some more time to use them. And uh, decab is, is kind of is scary. Like that's yeah. a lot of heavy equipment that I would love to be able to use, but you know, it's a little terrifying. So that's something you don't want to mess with yeah. unless you know what you're doing. <laughs> you would learn it fast. I just, I just, you know, I know how you are and what we got going on over there. There's got to be some kind of crazy Christmas tree thing you can build or. <laughs> I have a, we're moving and to a new house. So, um, I think I'm going to do some crazy wall control stuff in the, in the next place we live. Uh, I have some ideas cooking around. I, yeah, I'm excited to see those. So along those same lines, is there anything, um, any creative use that you found for your wall control that you think other people hadn't thought of? So I know we touched on home gyms, things like that, but I mean, I've seen just in your office, you got cool applications and the way you got led lights hanging from, your, you know, get your plants on the wall, all kind of stuff I've seen. So anything. That's actually where I'm going with my next wall control, um, venture is, uh, in my office at work, I have like some bonsai trees and some, some other plants hanging on the wall because, um, if you're a plant person, like you can get one plant, but plant people, like we acquire them and propagate them. And for long, every flat surface is full of plants. And if you're, you know, a collector of hobbies like myself, all of your flat store spaces are already full of piles of half done projects. And so you have to go vertical. There's yeah. nowhere else to go, but up. And so, um, I do a lot of gardening and I, I start my seeds inside so they don't freeze. And when you're starting seeds, you have to constantly raise the light up to keep the plants. You have to keep a light at a, at a consistent level and then, you know, vary it based on what plants are under the lights. So uh, I was, usually takes up my entire garage. I'm like, why am I not putting this on the wall? I could start all my seeds on one wall instead of taking up the entire garage. So I, I might be building that in the office. Um, I like it. That's good. And I already, I learned, I thought I was going to learn about wall control, but I learned about planting seeds and why all mine are dying and about the light. I didn't know any of that. So you want to keep them like warm and 
Uh, once they start to sprout, they need the light, but they can't be outside because then it might freeze. So um, there's a strong possibility that our cubicle area um, is going to be full of plants. In like I like that. A weeks. So let's That's go on Instagram right now and we get plantcontrol.com. Yeah, um, yeah. seriously. Yeah, exactly. That's plantwall.com. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm um, not joking. I'm going to look these up. You should so. look that up before this. That's goes exactly live. <laughs> what I'm, I'm going to, I will definitely do that. So it's, I couldn't believe like jimpegboard.com was available. So, and again, yeah. not to, I mean, well, that's already bought, so we're good there, <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll have to find some more, some more ways to yeah. spread like, the People word. make living walls all the time. Like, why would you not <laughs> use steel that's powder coated? Like I am always spraying some sort of something on there or, you know, if you're watering them and it spills, like it's not going to mess anything up. You can just Windex it and it's fine. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to have a little wall control garden in the office now. (laughs) All right. Don't regret that. Yeah. (laughs) What about you, Adam? Any Adam's shop? Well, you can tell everybody it's, it's, it's tiny. It's, uh, it's (laughs) Adam is what you're six, six, uh, six, five, six. Okay. Thank you for the, uh, Oh, that's all right. That, yeah. He's a tall guy. So, so, uh, my shop is uh 10 by 16. It's a little detached garage in the back of my yard. And, um, it was a scary rat infested falling down. You wouldn't go in there. You would think there were bodies in there. And so I've cleaned it out over the years and wall control everywhere. Um, but I can, I can almost reach from side to side is how small it is. But I mean, there is, I mean, it is, as much wall control as I can get on every wall control surface at point. And that was the, that was the great thing about it. And I think my first pitch to you also was I don't have space. I need to be able to get all this off the ground. I can't have tool cabinets everywhere. And I put all my tools up on, on the wall there with wall control. And, um, I mean, it just, it made so much sense of being able to grab stuff and being able to get this tool there, this tool there. And we have seen that just absolutely explode in the woodworker and maker community as well because it's, it's so convenient to have. Now I'm going to throw a different idea to you. One of my favorite things that I want to try that I haven't is I love seeing how these people are building computers directly to wall control. Oh, frames. Yeah. It's not something that I can do. Um, I'm working on a desk right now, a computer desk, and I've thought about building a computer on there, but I mean, mount it right to it on the wall. You have the CPU and everything on there. It's crazy. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. There's been some, we've seen some good, uh, images have been tagged on Instagram and people have sent in from photo contests that have that application. It's pretty sweet. That's so cool. Yeah. That's definitely something we should promote a little, a little harder. So, and look for partners that do that. Mm So speaking of like continuing down the line of creative thinking and uses of wall control stuff was talking about doing, um, looking at, uh, comic con having dragon con dragon con. Yeah. Yeah. Having like, you know, like for costumes, because we've seen one of our photo contest winners recently was a costume, uh, amazing setup. So check that out on the website. You know, if you're, if you're curious, but, um, yeah, so we might have to try, we were talking about trying to find a partner of somebody in that community mm-hmm. that would want to either go to it or at least do a setup that we could share to get the creative juices flowing for folks. I so. have a contact that actually used to run comic-con like one of the people like main people that would love to do something like dude that. let's do it so, that's what yeah I, I, so i had a couple makers coming to workbench con yeah. i told them they need to stop by and, and chat about it yeah we should definitely yeah, let's go in that direction for sure you know what we should also talk about too is um nerf gun storage oh yeah, yeah. we had the guy from canada that that was one of the biggest setups that we ever um uh, we ever did in bastard wise massive i mean we're talking hundreds of like nerf arsenal of things and yeah. just in this guy's basement and it was it's amazing they have a, a big youtube channel where they're doing all these different uh like crazy videos of stuff uh, he and his brother and um i mean yeah it's crazy i mean it it's literally floor to ceiling wall control just just panels everywhere and like even in weird places like just i mean just all over the place a bifold door yeah. There's another one. The bifold door opens and closes with the, uh, with the wall control on that. Yeah. All blue and yellow, I yep. think is what colors he went with, which is, I mean, it like if you were to just walk in that room and not know what you're walking into, it's like, Oh, I mean, even knowing what it is, it's crazy. So yeah, that's a good, yeah. The nerf, the nerf crowd has been, um, one that's kind of taken off into. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we've seen some cool applications there. Um, so yeah, uh, going back to workbench con and kind of what you guys got going on, um, any announcements you can talk about? I don't want to spill the beans or ruin any surprises on anything, but I know you've got some cool stuff in the works. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, I actually filmed a TV show that's a renovation TV show last year, and it got picked up for a full order on the Outdoor Network, and we're going to debut it here at WorkbenchCon. It's actually the closing ceremony, and so we're going to show the whole pilot, um, the whole cast for the most part is going to be there. And we actually had wall control uh, set up in there, so um, the name is pending right now, um, so hopefully we'll have it in the next few days. But basically what you do is we're taking um, old hunting cabins and we're renovating them and bringing them back to life. Essentially I'm talking about the heritage of the place, the families that go there. And I mean, it's a, it's a renovation show with a a little bit of outdoor edge. And um, I mean, a lot of these places they run hunts out of. And so we did a full setup of uh, wall control and and we called it a drop zone because the host is from um, the, the hunting show drop zone. So uh, we had a whole drop zone set up there. They could put all their gear when they come in and um, going forward, we want to have wall control in every single uh, flip that we do. Yeah. Um, we're excited about that. And that uh, another partner that we work with is uh, hang time, which is custom printed wall control panels. Um, if you're not familiar, they're, they're pretty cool. We obviously have them up on our website if you want to check them out. Um, but uh, so we did a camo setup and we can do custom logos. Um, you know, we did that for them, but we can do it for anybody. And Adam's also instrumental in that. So if you were to behind the Instagram over there, uh-huh, too. <laughs> you might see those DMS as well. So, uh, but yeah, it's been, that's been a cool partnership and creative partnership that we've been able to come up with. And I won't go too far into that because we're actually planning on having, uh, two of those guys on, um, on our next episode or next, uh, in studio recording. So yeah, very, very cool. Well, I don't want to, um, you know, get too long winded, uh, with this episode here, but anything, anything else you guys want to talk about or touch on, um, anything you got going on, anything you want anybody to know about lazy guy DIY or uncommon outpost Steph, you want to go first or wall control. Or yeah. Wall control. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm putting a lot of my, uh, my creative energies into wall control right now. We, you know, we're doing a lot. Um, I'm trying to work on some new accessories. Um, hopefully be able to go watch them laser out the designs I have. So I'm looking forward to that and doing some custom powder coating colors. We've got some samples coming in. So yeah, you know. that's a great point. Um, we're, we're, and I haven't even talked to you about this, Adam, but breaking news. I know. Well, we're looking to do because we, have a full fabrication shop in the cab tool and die. We want to start doing some like one-off stuff, even if it's just, you know, a hundred units or Stephanie's got some really cool powder coat sample colors that we want to try to do and just limited edition, you know, just fun stuff like that. So anything you can think of, you know, we talked about like a Willy Wonka panel. That's a random color that gets put in a box or something that you win something. I don't know. Gold there's ticket. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, different ways we can go with it. Now that we, you know, we have our own powder coat line, we can do what we want to do, you know, do one off things there. And then also obviously we got a machine shop. What I've, I've always, um, like over the years, as you, you know, kind of grow a business, you start out, everything's custom because you just have to get some orders, some sales. And then you, your, your staff grows at a, I'd say a lesser clip than what your ambitions are. And so you end up just doing the things that you can do quickly and obviously profitably. And so you kind of, all the custom kind of goes by the wayside. Um, and I think now we're in a place where we want to start bringing some of that back and experimenting with these one-off runs. So, yeah, I, I will say the most requested color now is neon green. Really? It is really? jumped up there. I, I is see it stuff. hang time? Cause it's that color. Maybe. I don't know. It, it might've been, but uh, I mean, specifically like a, like a Kawasaki green color. I've seen it all over. Like people are requesting it like crazy. Okay. Well we you should get some like day glow. Yeah. Like, yes. Let's do that. Glow right. in, or you could do some glow in the dark panels. Maybe. I don't know if that <laughs> scientifically would work, I don't but know. I'm, it would be bright in the darkish. Yeah. Maybe we'll yeah. have the powder guys on yeah, the podcast sure. and yeah. ask them live. That's or, great. Yeah. <laughs> stuff. Like ring that. panels where you can uh, put like, your hand on them. And yeah. I yeah. think that's a liquid paint, but is, yeah. I'm down for, um, you know, experiment. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We've had, I mean, we've, I mean, Stephanie's made lunch in the, in the powder coat oven before. So there's definitely been experiments done. So, yeah, I guess we should mention that also is that Stephanie does an awesome job of behind the scenes on the Instagram. So if you see those coming through there, anytime that she's working on a project, the best part is when she's powder coating red in the room and it looks like a Dexter. uh, Yeah. It looks (laughs) like bad things have happened. Yeah. It's hilarious, but Stephanie does an awesome job. So if you're ever looking for cool, like 
how it gets made behind the scenes stuff. We try to post those um, whenever Stephanie puts them out there and they're definitely worth a watch. Like yeah. making a sandwich on an assembly, like on, on a powder coat or bake line. Exactly. Yeah. The behind the scenes stuff is great. And it's, I mean, the, not just to do a great job with the powder line and production and inventory and all that, but also be able to put out that kind of contents. Um, really impressive. So thanks. yeah, cool. Well, um, I guess, Tell folks where they can find you, best ways to get in touch. I mean, obviously, social is going to be probably primary. Um, same thing, you know, if a brand wanted to reach out or what would Absolutely. you tell them? Well, I'm I'm in behind every single Instagram account out there. But, you are. Uh, but mainly Lazy Guy DIY or Maker's Challenge Central, which I didn't even talk about, but I should. Well, you got, we got, go. Okay, well, Maker's Challenge Central is another thing that I'm a partner on, and it is a crazy online contest that we have been running for six years six years now almost, but basically it's woodworking. There's art, there's epoxy projects, there's furniture flip challenge. And, uh, twice a year for each of the contests, we send out plans and then people, um, compete from all over the world. And we have a theme that's a secret theme that everybody finds out the same day. Then you have three weeks to make something. And so, um, it is, um, it's blown up to, yeah, it's, gotten huge since you, you guys started it like we partner with do-it-yourself magazine um we've obviously partnered with wall control and stuff um but i mean the prizes that you can win are i mean it's like the five thousand dollar prize pack of tools and all kinds of other things under the sun so um it, we are very excited about that and we'll actually be at workbench con also with our booth for the first time to get people signed up and giving away prizes and everything too so we're we're really excited about where this thing is taking off at so. yeah if you're and if you at this workbench con or really any other, if you want to find Adam, he's pretty much involved in every other booth that's there. So just walk in and ask where Adam is and they can find him. So there is actually going to be like a full size banner of me for the TV show. Really? <laughs> oh, that'll be, yeah, it's, I was telling, can um, we keep that at wall <laughs> control? Office? Or yes. Say, not at your house though. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that would be weird. My yeah. Adam would not no. like that. <laughs> exactly. So many Adams. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, just, I've seen it grow a ton since we started working uh, with you guys. So what about you, Steph? How can people find you? And well, um, if you go to Uncommon Outpost, that's also Adam. So yeah, exactly. You- <laughs> yep, I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, um, you can probably find me on Instagram. Um, I'm Uncommon Outpost and Wall Control shares a lot of the stuff that I'm doing behind the scenes because Wall Control is Adam. So yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully I'll do the next uh, Maker Challenge Central. Um, yeah, you maybe should. I'll have to get in the tool and die shop and Ooh. see what I can. I think so. That'll see what be I fun. can make a mess out of. Yeah, it'll be. Yeah, it would. It'd be fun to watch you come up with something in there. So I know what the themes are well ahead of time. So maybe we'll sneak something in there ahead of time. So, you know, have plenty of time to work on it. I like that. That'll be fun. Cool. Very good. Well, thank you both for coming on. I'm looking forward to a fun weekend um, at the conference. And yeah, so thanks a lot. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Organization Conversation is brought to you by Wall Control, a family-owned and operated producer of best-in-class wall-mounted organizers for your home or business, made right here in the USA. To learn more, go to wallcontrol.com.